Peter Parker and his clone Ben Riley have so much intriguing history together, and when the current writer of The Amazing Spider-Man, Zeb Wells, joined Marvel's Spider-Man for the Beyond storyline, he and a group of several other Marvel writers began to really kind of flesh out uh, ben Riley as a villainous character due to him being manipulated and his memories being altered by the mysterious Beyond Corporation. And Ben Riley let some of these, um, you know, dark and, and bleak memories take hold of, you know, some of his inner emotions on a primal level to the point where he managed to stage a demonic invasion on New York City with X-Men villain Madeline Pryor uh, to form Marvel's Dark Web. Now that Peter has escaped from limbo, it's time for him to go ahead and face Chasm one more time in Spider-Man's Dark Web finale. My name is Arako Braddock, and today let's go ahead and jump deep into Marvel's Dark Web finale issue uh, to see just how Spider-Man kind of wraps things up with his one-time friend and one-time foe, Ben Riley. But before we get deeper into the video, I want to go ahead and encourage you to consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that like button if you enjoy our content. Next up, I want to go ahead and introduce The Amazing Spider-Man's uh, Dark Web Finale number one by reading Marvel's solicitation text for the issue. The dawn rises after the demonic invasion of New York City, but what will that light reveal? It will reveal Chasm's final gambit and the new denizens of hell he helped create and unleash on Spider-Man and the X-Men. See how Dark Web changed this city's landscape forever. And I want to read off our creative team behind this Dark Web finale. Uh, this issue is written by Zeb Wells. Uh, the art in the issue is drawn by Adam Kubert, uh, Francesco Mortarino, and Scott Hanna. We have colors from Frank Martin and Guru EFX. The letters in the issue are, are depicted by VC's Joe Caramagna, and we have a cover over from Adam Kubert and Frank Martin that I want to go ahead and show off right now. Here's a look at the kind of um, cover for the Dark Web finale. I love this cover so much and how it kind of shows, um, you know, Chasm side of Dark Web with the Insidious Six characters, as well as uh, Peter Parker over with the X-Men who have been kind of assisting him with Dark Web is Dark Web is a storyline kind of centered around both Spider-Man and the X-Men. And I want to thank Adventures in Poor Taste for posting these previews of the issues so quickly. And we can go ahead and take a look at some of these pages and look at the interior art over from Adam Kubert. Adam Kubert draws a very kind of curved and kind of crooked line which is actually great for this issue because it can be really precise when it comes to uh, these, these panels featuring characters like um, Chasm and Hollow's Eve that need to be really precise in certain moments, but they can definitely be more loose, especially on this page as we see kind of all the background characters of Limbo. Um, you know, one of the effects that Limbo has is kind of turning everyday objects into demons. So looking at, you know, the curved lines of some of like the objects in the background is just a great like visual representation uh, to show off Limbo in the issue. One thing that I don't particularly like about Adam Kubert are the depictions of some of his characters, um, especially with Spider-Man. The way he draws the characters like so kind of nimble and narrow in certain moments uh, detracts away from my uh, enjoyment of the issue on the artistic side ever so slightly just because it kind of doesn't feel natural anymore for me. And, um, you know, despite the fact that we have, you know, gorgeous panels showing off the kind of like vast location of Limbo or the really kind of precise figures of um, Ben Riley and Hollow Z from the previous page, Whereas kind of like these figures of Spider-Man and Madeline Pryor just don't quite feel up to that sense of a visual fidelity. And I feel like it's because they are sort of caved in in certain moments. Overall, though, I did really enjoy the art in the issue. Um, Qbert is drawing a lot of characters. I can, you know, t definitely tell Madeline Pryor apart from Jean Grey. I can, you know, spot magic. And also, you know, Spider-Man is very clearly... 
um, you know, visually distinctive from his kind of counterpart, Rec Rap, who has some really enjoyable uh, moments throughout this issue as well. So that's really great to see. So narratively, there is quite a lot to go ahead and resolve um, as part of Marvel's Dark Web. Because the Dark Web X-Men series essentially tied up a large portion of the X-Men's involvement of the series with Madeline Pryor. But in the kind of last issue of Amazing Spider-Man, um, we saw Ben Riley, um, you know, take the soul scythe from Madeline Pryor and become the, the villainous King Chasm. So there's a lot kind of narratively to be resolved over in this issue. One of the things that I've seen a lot of people kind of drawing criticism on the Amazing Spider-Man's Dark Web kind of storyline is the fact that they've created this kind of um, narrative tension between uh, Ben Riley and Peter Parker. But I really think that author Zeb Wells has used this to his advantage. I've really enjoyed the intro sequences in Amazing Spider-Man issues that show kind of the way that Riley's mind has been manipulated, and it shows you why he has some of that lingering animosity towards Spider-Man. I think, too, kind of like the way that Peter Parker has been reacting to both kind of Chasm and the Goblin Queen has made Dark Web feel more relatable. There's moments where he makes fun of Madeline Pryor's kind of like, um, you know, assault staged on Limbo right to her face. And she deserves some of that criticism because she was the one who kind of cooked it up in the first place. And now she's trying to hit the reset button. So watching her directly take responsibility and also, you know, having that kind of like narrative tension in the subtext of that being put directly to her face is exactly why I love this crossover so much. I think there's so many kind of little moments here. Also, I appreciate the fact that Dark Web has been so creative in even taking some of the lingering plot threads from Venom and implementing Bedlam into kind of, um, you know, this issue as well. Bedlam is such an intriguing character, and I love what kind of Ram V, Al Ewing, Brian Hitch, Kafu, I love what they're kind of dreaming up on the Venom side of things. And in a dark fantasy crossover with Spider-Man, you definitely need... Um, you know, Venom involved in order to kind of make sure that Spider-Man feels narratively cohesive. And I want to talk a little bit of spoilers in some of the last pages of the issue to kind of sum things up here. Um, first of all, I really enjoy how uh, Zeb Wells is kind of, um, you know, having a throwback to the very early stages of his run by kind of breaking things down in seasons with the post credit scene in the issue. Um, I think that's a wonderful nod to his kind of early Spider-Man stuff. And also, I, I just really appreciate the fact that Peter and Ben are, are kind of at the end of this issue. It feels like their relationship has been kind of accelerated to the next phase. I, I, I think some of that lingering animosity between the duo is starting to kind of slowly dissipate in the final panels, or at least kind of you know, Peter Parker is doing what he can to lessen the tension. And it's very cathartic, too, to feel like even though Madeline Pryor has regressed, especially towards the beginning of Dark Web, seeing her kind of narratively come to terms with some of the decisions that she's made and finally start to turn things around and make that decision is really what makes this issue kind of feel special to me. Also, I really love that moment, um, you know, between Hollow's Eve and Chasm towards the end of the issue that kind of takes Hollow's Eve off the board. I thought that was just a wonderful scene that showed a little bit of compassion over from Ben Riley. You know, he's never really 100% committed to being a villain. And it's little moments like these where we really kind of see that sense of characterization um, shine through throughout the issue. So those were some of my thoughts on the dark web finale. Uh, I just have to take a step back here and say that I think Marvel did a fantastic job with this crossover. This crossover has been so much fun to read. It's been so kind of sound and narratively structured. Anytime there was kind of like a silly moment or somebody made fun of the premise of the story, that was kind of cohesively weaved into the narrative. 
There were so many like funny moments of humor throughout the series, including uh, you know funny moments where both Madeline Pryor and Ben Riley are being like knocked down a peg in certain situations. Um, you know this this demonic assault that they waged was never quite as structurally sound as I think they they thought it was in the beginning of the Amazing Spider-Man 14. Um, so just kind of watching their house of cards that was built on such like you know a thin foundation fall apart was such a joyous treat in this issue. And I feel like I've been saying this recently in some more videos, but I think the reason why I am so invested in this is because we've gotten Spider-Man side of the story, but we also really have gotten Ben Riley and Madeline Pryor side of the story as well. And there is so much continuity in history between these characters. And I think kind of like throughout Dark Web, there's just been this like little nuanced um, attention to detail in terms of the characterization. And those small little connections, I think weave in to really make Dark Web feel incredibly special. So those were my final thoughts on the issue. I, I love this crossover. I had a blast with this series. I want to know if you guys enjoyed every issue of Dark Web, including this finale, as much as I did. Thank you so much for coming to check out the video, and I will see you very soon for upcoming issues of The Amazing Spider-Man. Thanks so much, and we'll see you soon. Bye.